So good to see all of you, my friends, my fellow light workers, and everybody that's starting on your intuitive journey and just trying to figure out what's coming through. I want to extend a big hug and a big welcome to my channel, especially if it's your first time coming here. Uh, this is a great way to start because this video you can use all year long. I'm going to organize it in such a way that uh, you can use it to really be either a navigating force at the beginning of the year or a way to sort of catch up and figure out, am I on track as the year progresses? So feel free to bookmark it, feel free to come back. Uh, I hope that this is a very useful video for you. Let me talk about the organization of it. I'm gonna start off by pulling three cards, looking at past influences for the year of 2019, then the big opportunities for 2019, and then what's coming through uh, as potential challenges and things that you might be wanting to either embrace or check in with, so fears and opportunities in the future. So past, present, and future basically we'll be looking at for the year as a whole. Then I'm going to pull uh, a 10 card spread to really look at uh, everything that I, I can't kind of see in those three cards. Uh, so really getting into the nitty gritty of what you're bringing in as baggage, um, what sort of people might be coming through, what sort of notes about health might be popping up, etc. And then we'll expand the forecast. And what I'd like to do then is look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. And then I'm going to do month by month all the different months of the year, a single card with some notes about that. So you get basically it's almost like an overarching forecast, like a weather forecast for what's going on. And then uh, very specific milestones within the year that you can kind of look at. And I hope that this resonates with you. It's probably the deepest dive that I've taken into an annual forecast to date, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing how it works. So let's get started. I'd like to start off with um, three cards, looking again at past, present, and future influences for the year ahead. We'll begin by shuffling the deck, and as always at this point, I like to remain quiet and just observe the energy that's coming through. So for past, present, and future, Here's what we've got. So uh, the very cool thing here when we're looking at the past is it looks like many of you have done work to um, really try to work on your skills with relationships. Um, the Three of Cups is all about being able to connect better to those around you, um, to celebrate the work that you've done so far. But there's a general note here on what we need to let go of. This can be a card where you are working hard to please others. Um, and so as we go into 2019, uh, the focus here goes from the group to self-development. And so while it's always important to take care of the people around you, to try to make an effort to, um, to cooperate, to share time and energy with them, um, not giving into peer pressure, not feeling that you have to fit into some sort of pre- determined mold uh, that society, your family, friends are trying to fit you into, that's going to be something really important as this year kicks off. Um, and the general focus for this, uh, this year, the present influences for 2019 are focusing on managing your life, your strength, your energy, and not letting uh, other people's problems, drama, or the noise that they kind of create block you from your path. With the Strength card, in an upright position, it's a very independent card. It's a very powerful card. Usually people who um, pull the Strength card for themselves, or if I'm looking at it and it's a crowning position in a reading, uh, I would see someone who's able to navigate tricky situations, who's very adept at getting other people to see their point of view, persuasive, um, sometimes even to the point that people may misinterpret that as manipulation. The reversal of this, though, is saying that you want to focus on self-empowerment, that you're actually not exaggerated in that, uh, in some, some of those areas that I was talking about. It's saying focus on finding your inner strength, speaking up for yourself, standing up for yourself. And the big message that I see with the strength card in reverse is to try to manage what you can control, your own affairs, not to try to interfere with other people's decision-making process, with how they feel. You can kind of present opportunities and things that you are seeing and people can either gravitate towards it or away from it, knowing that the universe is kind of helping you attract or repel the, the people in your life that need to come in, naturally speaking. Um, so I want you to sort of sit in that place of power, focus on yourself, manage yourself, get out of other people's 
um, energy and spaces. Don't feel like you have to convince them or force them to see something from your perspective. And ultimately by doing that, you're going to, like I said, sort of put this really good attractive energy into the opportunity space for 2019. The star card was upright and that's showing me that if we're looking at the arch of this year or the arc of this year, I should say, um, the end is looking a lot easier and more fulfilling than the beginning and middle. So as you are starting it, it's about sort of dealing with pressures of others or trying to meet up to standards that have already been set. As you look at the middle, it's about sort of doing an inward search and becoming stronger and finding your voice and ultimately being able to step up, step out and to show people who you are and not worry so much about how they think you're going to fit in or not fit in or um, editing yourself because you're afraid of what people might think. And that's the hardest thing for most of us because uh, we're kind of in a society and in a culture where, you know, we want to please. And I think that's actually intrinsic to almost every society that you want to fit in. You want to make sure that people love you. And the interesting thing with this card is it's saying love begins with self-love. And when you think of it, it's sort of like a deceptively simple solution that's always in front of us. But the way that we cast our own feeling about ourselves is the way that others are going to perceive us. So when you stand in a position of feeling like you're empowered, you're working your passion, you're not hiding anything, that's why there's never any clothing in the star card, you're just shining brightly, you don't need any artifice, anything to hide behind, that's when you truly step into your power. And so that's what we're seeing. If, uh, another sort of um, trend that I'm seeing with this is the first card is sort of power in numbers and also power that you might have given to others. The second card is reclamation bringing it back, going within, knowing that you've always had the strength, just like the Wizard of Oz, right? Um, the lion always had the strength that he thought he had, but he needed to be told or he needed to believe it first. And so just by wearing something that showed that he had that strength, he believed he had it. So once you can kind of just believe it and wear it, other people will see it. And then you're kind of unstoppable if you can um, really get through this second phase. So I would say for most of you, the biggest challenge this year is self-love, self-empowerment, tuning out, trying to please and or um, control others in your life. And through exercising self-love and self-control, um, people naturally gravitate towards you. That's the sign of a good leader, someone who doesn't have to prove that they're powerful or they're strong. Just people are attracted to the energy because they see the sense of ease. So if you can walk in 2019 with a sense of ease and, um, and trust, trusting in yourself, that's going to be a, a fantastic way to uh, really maximize the energy of this year. Now that we've looked at all of the past, present, and future influences for the year, we're going to look at the year in greater depth here before we go into a granular month by month. So let's see what the cards have to say. This is going to help us as we navigate the larger spread at looking at all of the months and um, all of the opportunities that might be presenting themselves. So as we look at the center here, we have the Eight of Swords in reverse. This is actually a good um, positioning of the card, the upright version usually showing a feeling of being unprepared, uncertain, unaware of what's going on. So one theme that I'm seeing at the center of your spread is one of um, awareness, enlightenment, and digging a little bit deeper. And as we looked at your central opportunity for 2019, that's really what it was, was going within. So don't be afraid to, to sort of like explore places that before you felt you weren't ready for. That strength card is actually showing that you are. Once you do that, manifestation is at your fingertips. We have the magician card here which is really showing that your energy can go in almost any direction or any dimension that you want it to. The only challenge that ever comes with the, the magician is one of time management and one of decisiveness. Where exactly do you want to spend your time, your energy and your passion? That's sort of your big opportunity here as you're exploring sort of growth areas for 2019. Looking at the past here, we have the five of wands in reverse. So for some of you that felt like you were in a sort of perpetual whirlwind of activities where you couldn't catch up with yourself, um, I do see an easing of that uh, as the year starts to kick off or an understanding that you 
you're not going to feel as helpless because when we combine that eight of swords with the five of wands, there's this feeling with the two of them being reversed that I'm over this feeling that I'm not getting anywhere. I'm starting to see something at the end of the tunnel, which is good. The next big change that I see is a development within of self-worth. We have here in the reverse state, in the crowning position, a five of pentacles card. Uh, and what we have here in the recent past, which is going to affect this and is going to change the way that you're viewing yourself is the Wheel of Fortune. Let's start with the Wheel of Fortune. For me, this is a perfect card to summarize a year because it usually shows four seasons or a change. This plus the world, it's showing forward momentum. So as we enter 2019, forward momentum when it comes to worth, opportunity, um, finances. Uh, so overall, I already see you on a positive uptick with that. But first you have to overcome this feeling of either being stuck in a pattern of not being appreciated or maybe having the feelings of self-doubt. The Five of Pentacles card, you'll notice a lot of times there's a, an older person and a younger person. So it can be a mentor-mentee situation or a father and child or mother and child or a sibling, older and younger sibling. But usually it's showing something that harkens from the past that you're dealing with um, where you didn't receive some of the encouragement or support or you had a setback. Um, you know, there's something that happened where you, you needed something and didn't receive it. As an adult or as you get more sort of mature and, and confident in yourself, you realize that you're going to already embody all those things that you needed. Just like, again, thinking back to Wizard of Oz and the Lion, you have it. You just have to believe it. When you believe it, then you cut through this tendency for people to see you as someone who doubts themselves. And what happens with that is you can attract people in your life either in a relationship or job situation where they push through that crack a little bit and they're like, ah, I, I can actually um, use that to my advantage. So when you feel that I'm not someone that needs validation externally, then if someone is acting up or trying to give you a hard time or trying to manipulate you, it doesn't work. You just think, okay, and you move forward and then they move on to someone else that's going to react. So I want you to be strong and to forgive yourself and forgive whoever in your life might have been making it difficult at that point because in that forgiveness or at least in the acknowledgement of the trigger then you're going to move past it and then you're going to start to see i kind of already have what i needed i don't need to hear it from someone who's not loving me enough or appreciating me enough to say what i need anyway so you start to value yourself more than the validation from someone that again isn't really there for you when you need them so taking a leap of faith here we have the Fool card here. Um, this one is very sort of wizard-esque, if you want to. It reminds me of Harry Potter, but it's that chance of taking a leap of faith and realizing, much like the, um, the wizard or the witch in this uh, card, you're going to be able to soar in the future. You have to trust yourself. We never know some of the challenges that uh, might lie ahead of us, but if you have done all the work and you take that leap and you believe in yourself, you're definitely going to be happy with the whatever happens, whether you succeed initially or you have some challenges and keep working towards it. It's always better to have that attempt than to sit back in fear um, or feel that you can't do it because you're not deserving because someone in your life said that. Uh, once when I was a kid and I was, I was volunteering for one of my teachers, uh, I remember I was reading evaluations for the work that he was doing and there was some really scathing stuff. And he, he reminded me, he said, it's like water off your back, you know, like rain that's falling and you just let it go. He said, there's always going to be one or two people in your life that are just vindictive or not supportive or can't see it from the right point of view. He said, if I was getting, you know, a hundred reviews and they're all good and one or two aren't, then I know that I'm teaching this uh, curriculum to the best of my ability. So that, that always stuck with me is that you can't please everybody. If you're happy and you know that you're doing the best that you can do, then that's really it at the end of the day that matters because it's between you and the universe. And so as long as you are doing your best and working in your soul's path and your soul's dream, that's, the, that's really your litmus test for success or failure. So ironically, when you let go of this, when you no longer care, then you're attracting the support that you've been looking for. Because when I'm looking at the ego of the year, um, the opportunity that's sort of sitting there once you've overcome your um, sort of obstacles, we have the four of wands. Support, um, acclaim, partnership. For many of you, this sort of feeling of love and community comes through this year. So whether you're in an existing relationship or seeking out friendship or love or even not looking for it, 
it's going to present itself this year. The question is, as we look at the environment card, are you ready? We have the hermit card here, which is saying some of you may be pulling back a little bit. Um, so, you know, the energy of five of pentacles, much like four of pentacles, is one of retraction or subtraction or reduction. And so I want to warn you there that while it's good to do work on yourself, this card, what we were looking on the developmental strength card, could go to an extreme. And, uh, you know, at some point I want you to come out of the meditation, come out of the sort of uh, seclusion and explore and embrace the world. And that's really what that's saying is don't miss out on something because you're either afraid or, or so razor focused on yourself that you've completely forgotten about environmental sort of uh, things that are going on, opportunities and, and, um, and engagements. So do say yes to parties, to people inviting you out. Don't do it all the time, but make sure that you're not becoming sort of a recluse this year. There is a, a danger for some of you. And as we're looking at really where you're headed this year, for many of you, you could be going into a new job. So we have the Fool card here, reverse, showing a little bit of hesitation, but ultimately a, a shift or movement. And then we have the Knight of Pentacles, which is moving forward with a more resources, more opportunity, more self-worth, and also showing that towards the latter part of the year, and we'll take a look and see where it might fall when we pull the 12 cards for the 12 months, but, but towards the latter part of the year, there's really a great potential for increased growth and increased movement. In addition to that, for many of you, this could become a chance for you to speak your mind because we have the Knight of Swords. We have two Knight cards, Knight of Pentacles, Knight of Swords. So increased um, resources and money, also increased opportunity to stand up for yourself, to fight for what you want to communicate. And also knowing that for many of you, the, the way in which you speak and present yourself is actually how you're gonna make your money and there's a lot of power in it. So don't be quiet, don't be shy, stand up, be bold, rise up to the challenges that are coming this year because when I'm looking at, if we pull these three cards, they're from different decks, but they kind of show the same thing. Um, you're going to be in a place where there's a lot more accountability and a lot more visibility, but in that there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of movement, a lot of growth, and whatever stagnation that you felt before in resources goes away and whatever delay was happening in the past with the five of wands in reverse feels like it's erased towards year's end. So I really feel good about the overall energy this year. The only thing that you have to work on really is that sense of self-worth. It directly feeds into your resources, your money, and how fast things start to change in your life. And again, it does feel like there's a move or a shift happening for many of you around the midpoint of the year. So let's go ahead and move on now to an expansion of this, looking at health, wealth, love, and destiny for the whole year. And then we'll look at all 12 months. Let's go ahead now and take a look at your health card knowing that health includes your mind, body, and spirit. So we have encouragement here. So this message is really encouraging you to have hope, to do what it is that you need to do to be happier and to be healthier. For some of you, this is gonna be really important. It could mean taking this leap of faith, going somewhere that you don't expect, changing a job, changing a place of employment, a place of living, a relationship status, um, you're going to take that leap because it's right for you, because even though other people may not understand what you're doing, this is what you need. Um, love yourself. Love others in your life that even if they're making it hard to, to sort of be there for them, they may need your help too. But this is more about you. I'm, I'm reading for you over the course of this year, knowing that hope and the ability for you to see that silver lining is really what's going to help you get to the next stage in your recovery and your, in your life in general. So for anyone that is overcoming any sort of injuries, addictions, or challenges with respect to your health, something that I experienced last year because I had um, uh, you know, a fall where I broke <laughs> several bones in my body and it was difficult. Um, and that's why it's, you know, I, had, I had to take some time off. That's why even the past few months things have been a little bit delayed because it's self-care. I had to take care of myself. So take care of yourself too and understand that Things don't happen overnight and it, it can be okay. For me, I'll, I'll give you a little key to my own recovery too. I just never gave up on the idea that I would get to back to normal or back to the new version of normal for me. It may not be 100%, but it's gonna be darn close. And so I want you to be a little bit pers persistent and persuasive with your own sort of ability to walk that road of recovery. And uh, I'm encouraging you, you can do it. Have hope, don't give up. If you have a setback, 
Don't let that define you. Look at the long term. This is all about long term today. So look at the long term dream and aspiration that you will be back to where you need to be. Okay. Let's take a look at your wealth card for 2019. The card says trickery. It was reversed, but let me just pull it up right so we can see the illustration here. Um, what's important this year is, first of all, to just be honest with yourself with respect to where you're at in your finances. Um, some of you may be kind of feeling overwhelmed or feeling afraid and not, not knowing what's going on. So the very first step to empowerment and understanding is to simply get real with your money. Where are you spending too much? Where are you not saving enough? Uh, where are there areas where you're doing great and you need to do more of that? Um, kind of look at all of the parts of your budget and your resources. And um, this is kind of a card that shows me to not try to fool yourself to get real. Um, the other piece of this, of course, not a surprise as we're looking at the beginning of the year and the financial markets, it's off to a very bumpy beginning. And I think that this year over um, as a whole is going to be one of ups and downs. And so what you want to really focus on this year is making sure that you trust where you're putting your money. Um, I don't think that uh, un until things have leveled out that it's a great time to make risky choices or investments. Um, so with your money, be safe, be conservative, save more than you spend. Don't do something that uh, you're not comfortable with losing if it's a big investment. So uh, we're seeing that it's, it's hard to forecast this year with money, not because um, I'm being obtuse. I'm actually saying there's ups, there's downs, there's ups, there's downs. And I think if you even look at financial um, pundits, they're probably looking at this year and scratching their head trying to figure out what to do. So I think it will ease out towards the midpoint, but um, the beginning as we're looking at this is kind of tricky. And because I'm doing an expanded forecast and I just want to kind of give you a little bit more of a beginning, middle, end, I'm going to pull three more cards and just see if we can get some energy for the um, for the overarching year here with finances. So we'll expand the expanded forecast a little bit. So here are the three cards that I pulled. I'm going to uh, look at one at a time here. The first one was this uh, Four of Swords, which is beautifully illustrated here, showing that the first four months of the year, really January through April, it's about being conservative. We have a, a message here that actually says rest. And you, you know, the Four of Swords is, of course, a card of showing a need to kind of take it easy. And that's really the overarching message. Now, this is something that you can recover from or move from because we have the um, moth here or the, or the butterfly. I'm pretty sure this one's a moth, but um, either way, uh, this is showing that the first part of the year is one where it could be a little tricky as well because it may look better or worse than you think. So be conservative. Don't do too much. Don't move too quickly. Uh, really keep your when it comes to investments. Um, make sure that your decisions are in something that you can access your money. It's not tied up. Make sure that it's uh, dependable. And if in doubt, make sure that you're just putting it in an old fashioned traditional thing like a savings account or a CD while this sort of volatility is going on. When it comes to work opportunities as well, it would be a good time to try to uh, secure a period of time where you feel like you're going to be okay. So for those of you that freelance, this could be tricky. You want to try to get longer term engagements. If a full time gig comes up, it might be a good time to take it and weather the storm a little bit. As we look at May, June, July and August um, and even going into September, I would say we have this sort of card where it's difficult to get things going. So it's not impossible. The Ace of Swords is one of things taking off, things moving. It's a strong card. But what it's showing is even for those of us that are really sort of um, clear on our goals, there could be some setbacks when it comes to making progress. So you're going to have to be very, very persistent, um, put more resources into things than you would normally expect to get the same amount that you would get in the past. So basically, it's showing me that most of us will be working harder and possibly um, not always seeing what we did before. Um, so a slight devaluation in goods and services, um, maybe a little bit of shrinking of availability with, it, with respect to jobs and things like that. So really, overall this year, again, I think that's why we've got that strength card. Take care of yourself. Be strong. Be true to what you need in your life. And don't give too much um, when it comes to your time and energy 
to others. You're going to need it for the middle part of the year. This is kind of like a long distance run and the middle part there's going to be some shifts going on. So we have a slightly ambiguous end card for the year. We have the death card. And so for me, this could mean the end of this sort of shift, this cycle of ups and downs. It could also mean a punctuated end where um, there could be an adjustment when we're looking at a larger market. Um, but either way, we've got two cards of transformation this year. If we take it out of the sort of lens of the world and the micro macro economics of what's going on and look at you, um, because that's really what this forecast is about, this is showing to um, really pace yourself. Be again, just be careful, be, be sort of uh, looking at the long term goals, whether you're thinking of retired or you're retired or you're at the beginning of your career, you want to really be planning ahead for the next three or four years, not just the next three or four months. And definitely a period where you're going to be working hard, really trying to make it all um, come together. But that hard work will pay off. And if we look at transformation as an opportunity, an opening, um, then what it's showing is that whatever you've been kind of pushing through, it comes to a close towards the very last uh, three or four months of the year. So um, October, November, December, maybe even a little bit in September as well. So a period of change throughout this year. Um, this is one where I would say just looking at this, if I was just looking at someone's finances and it wasn't in the lens of a year or if I wasn't trying to get uh, too specific, I would just say, you really have to take care of, of yourself. You don't want to overextend and you want to expect the unexpected this year. Uh, it's very hard to gauge. Uh, so again, whether you're intuitive or you're a financial uh, forecaster, I think that 2019 is a year with respect to finances where you want to be very careful, take your time and um, just be grateful for what you have. Try not to push things too far in one direction. Let's take a look now at love and see what the overarching messages for love over this year. So we have the strength card in a different deck. And this is about, again, and it, now it's upright. It's interesting that we see both sides of the coin here, working on yourself and then again, having that sense of self-empowerment and strength uh, really mirrored back to you. So when we're looking at love, when you feel like you know who you are, you don't have to control people in your life. Um, there's a natural respect and a sort of order that happens within uh, what's going on around you. Uh, there's also very strong divine feminine energy that flows through this year. So for some of you, this could be a decision to, um, to go back and do something that you want in your life. And this is going to affect your relationships. So people around you may initially sort of feel like they're not, they're not sure who this new person is. Whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter because what the strength card is showing is a shift internally the that you're really kind of connecting with the internal goddess or God within you and feeling like okay I'm now I'm able to manifest and do what I want to do and so some people may be intimidated by that because the strength card is is a card where um, you know not everyone can be around a strong person or personality again I feel like you're being pushed in that direction this year so embrace it and know that if you're strong enough, you'll actually attract a partner that's of an equal caliber. It just may take time. So don't get upset if some people just can't deal with what you're trying to project or portray this month. For some of you, there could also be a Leo coming into your life. Um, so be open to that and see how that feels for you. And for most of you, I would say there's going to be themes of power and power dynamics within your relationships. Um, someone trying to, if you're not because we have two sides of the same coin here. If you kind of stay within this space and, and feel like you can't exist within your power, then people will come in that push your buttons. If you kind of take advantage of this self-empowerment, then some people may not know what to do with it, but ultimately you're, you're probably gonna be pulling in better work and career opportunities, and eventually you'll find someone that's comfortable being with a strong person. So um, you can go either way, but I'm seeing that there's a lot of strength and growth happening with you this year, and it's more about you than others around you, actually. And so just trust in that, okay? Let's look now at your destiny card. And this is sort of like the big area of where it can all go for you. To me, it's a very malleable card. It's one where you can um, control this if you don't like it. This is your GPS, and it's a chance for you to go in any direction. I feel like we just get the similar message coming through for you. So it's hammering it in over, over your head here. We have courage. 
Um, be courageous, stand up, fight for your beliefs. The card was reversed. So I keep seeing strength up and down, up and down. It's interesting because I feel like this is mirroring itself across everything. We could look at this strength message in health, wealth, love, and destiny, and all the months of the year. You're going to have to focus with your money this year on highs and lows, in relationships of power struggles like a tug of war, with your health. You're really going to have to be diligent about it because otherwise you're going to have this sort of yo-yo effect that could be happening. Um, and so overall, you have to stay in control and aware and awake. And that's, if we go back to the center, what it's all about. If your eyes are open, if your ears are open, if you're spiritually tuned in, then you're going to know what you need to do and you can use that as your internal compass. So some big messages this year with respect to growth and um, personal strength. And I think that's sort of what I would see as a uh, overarching view. Let's now get into a very granular month by month uh, spread. We'll pull one card for each month and we'll talk about where that can take us. And we might end on a sort of benediction or meditation at the very end. First though, I'm gonna clear off the table here and uh, prepare it for the annual spread here that I'm gonna lay out. And then I'm gonna turn the camera down. We'll get started, okay? All right, I'm excited to see what is coming through for 2019. Let me give this one more shuffle and we'll see month by month what to expect over 2019. In the first month of the year, we have the Stag card. In this particular deck, this is justice. And for me, justice personifies balance in your life. And it's sort of, uh, it can also indicate, of course, a strong Libra presence in your life as well. Um, sometimes even an Aquarius, but more Libra than Aquarius. Um, and for me though, when we're looking at this, it's to be clear in your thoughts and to not let others sort of cloud that up. And we're seeing, uh, you'll see this in a second in February, that's gonna carry over. But the big message here is do what's right. Um, don't be afraid to, to, to stand up for others if they're being treated unjustly. And balance your time and energy when it comes to your work-life balance, your obligations. And if you promise to do something, come through on that. Basically stick to contracts, to your, um, to your agreements, and do everything by the numbers. Do everything by expectations, laws, and regulations. It'll be very important. This isn't a time when you want to trip up because it's likely to be observed. Um, you want to travel the speed limit. You want to pay your taxes. You want to do everything that you can this month to make sure that you're in, in the clear. If you do that, you're going to sail through January. It's not going to be a big deal, but it's about being on track, organized, and clear and level-headed. Okay? No really big um, obstacles other than you might be tempted or swayed to go off that path. So as long as you can sleep with yourself at night and think, I did the right thing, I know that I'm doing what's important, what's right, um, then you're on the right track, okay? So keep steady, keep straight, keep on the narrow, the straight and narrow, and I think you're going to be fine. All right. Looking at February, this is the tricky month. And uh, what I'm seeing here with the King of Wands in reverse is a lot of opinions swirling around. We see here sort of like a, a snake nest or a snake den here. And there, this is a, a card of power. So when I look at a snake, I don't really worry. But what I'm seeing here is a lot of cooks in the kitchen. And with the reversal of this, there could be a lot of differing points of view that are trying to sway you or pull you in a different direction. This month more than ever, you need to try to be clear. So that work that you've done in January is going to set the tone. And if you've already kind of put out there that you're not easily swayed or you're not tempted uh, and you've already started to create this positive momentum, then what's coming through in February, you can absolutely manage. The other thing for some of you that are creative, this is a month where it's almost an overflow or an influx of creative ideas. You're going to need a place to download this and put it on paper or paint it or create. So this is a big month where you can channel and uh, put this into something good. So if you're feeling this overwhelming uh, flow of energy, uh, really take advantage of it because those, those periods don't happen all the time. We'd like them to, but a lot of times, you know, when we need it, we don't have it. You have it this time, so try to manifest when you have that. Uh, looking at a really positive uh, March, so January and February are a little tricky. You've had to really focus on things, but when I'm looking at March, we see this card marked by abundance, but I would say it's also 
acclaim. Normally when you see the Six of Wands, you see people around you that support you, that are ready to receive whatever you've been working on. So if you've taken advantage of that energy inflow that I was seeing happening in February, then you can share this with others and they're going to really be interested in that. So for independent business people, great time, even though we've had ups and downs as we looked at the overall sort of financial forecast, it's a great time to try to sell something or try to move something. So I like that month for you. And I also just feel like it's productive and with respect to relationships, it's a good time to date. It's a good time for persuasive um, sort of, I don't want to use the word arguments, but persuasive um, sort of discussions that you need to have where you're trying to get people to understand your point of view. Um, so this is a time if you needed to have like a, a legal action taken, really good time in the third month of the year to do that. So a lot of support, a lot of rallying of forces around you, uh, a lot of people that want your time and energy. So just make good decisions. I see you in a better place when we're looking at April. We have the page of wands. Uh, this one is showing a delivery of good news. For some of you also a decision to go forward with something, a new job, um, or a decision that you're going to, to make a change or a shift in your life. Overall, it's an empowered card. Uh, the one thing that I'm seeing here is don't be afraid. To, this is the month where I think you have to decide to take the leap because uh, we saw the fool needing to sort of get to grounded uh, grounded area and I see this as being sort of still it's almost more like a page of swords wanting to be a page of wands so I need you to get from the cognitive to the physical and to the manifestation so take that leap of faith in April that you're thinking about for some of you this could mean a strong fire sign coming into your life if it feels good great but for many of you I think this is just an understanding finally of what you want but a hesitation to kind of make that happen so we just looked at the first four months of the year, January, February, March, and April. Let's look now at May. Uh, this is when the full card actually happens. It's called the Wanderer here. So I, I wasn't even looking at that, but uh, especially since this is a slightly different illustration here, but this is the month. If you haven't taken the leap in April, you certainly are going to be ready by May. For some of you, this can indicate a birth. So you might see a, a young child coming into your life, whether it's your own or someone in your family, this is typically indicative of, of that um, change and shifting. Uh, so for some people, this can mean if you're not willing or ready to take the change, that there could be a change that's delivered to you. It's a sort of gentle version of the tower, um, but it could mean for some of you uh, an end of a contract. So uh, or it could also mean a layoff or a furlough or something like that. So I want you to be thinking ahead. If you're not feeling good about your job or your sustainability with respect to your finances, uh, towards the midpoint of the year, that's when you don't want any instability or insecurity when it comes to that. So I want you to prepare ahead. Make sure that you're saving a nest egg. Make sure that you have a plan B in case you need to vacate your job or your living situation because this can also be a move. So a lot of shifting happening. It's been winding up, but it doesn't really happen until May. And this is the point where you also feel free. The positive aspect of the Fool card is this feeling of, I can take a deep breath, I'm now starting something new. So whether it happened on your own volition or it happened because there was a, a universal push, it's generally a good thing for you, okay? I will say this, um, calculated risks look good. Risk for the sake of risk, not good, because it's hard to kind of see where you're headed. So um, just try to do your homework before you make some of those jumps and you'll be fine. All right, we looked at May, let's look at June. Um, June is probably one of the trickier months emotionally for you. This is the first time cups have come into play and we have the Queen of Cups in reverse. And so for this, I'm also seeing uh, a feeling of frustration when it comes to where you're at and where you're going. I look at a fish and I, I think to myself, usually like this is almost like it's swimming upstream, right? And the reversal of this is feeling like that momentum. You're, you're sometimes not making the progress that you want. So be easier on yourself. Realize that as we saw this year, there's gonna be ups and downs all across the board. There's gonna be tugs of war with respect to power dynamics. And so what you're experiencing is not only normal, but potentially even necessary to your personal growth. So. Be kind, be gentle, take care of yourself. It's a good time to get um, self-care. So whether it's just going to a doctor, checking in, making sure that your body is in a good place, doing something like Reiki, massage therapy, or whatever you want to do to sort of 
make sure that you're okay. This is the month to do it and to really check in internally. Interestingly enough, as we look at July, we have the Knight of Cups in reverse. Now, if we look at these two court cards together, and I'll pull them in the upright position, um, whenever I see two of the same suit, it can show that a central focus of your life is gonna be a, an intimate relationship. It doesn't necessarily have to tie into the suit in front of me, but what I'm gonna do is I will look at the aspects of cups and of knights and queens. So when we're looking at this, it's really about control of emotions, um, about I think also trying to control someone in your life because when I look at this eel, I think of something that's sort of slippery, sort of not easy to hold on to. So if there's something in your life that you really have a passion towards, it can be a person or it could be a project, um, letting it be uh, free, letting it go is kind of the theme of this because it starts off with the fool, which is release, which is um, detachment. Then we see this feeling of um, either needing to let go or needing to work through that emotion of the detachment. And then as we look at what's happening, it's a lessening of this and we move into um, the king of pentacles in reverse. I do feel like for some of you, there is this sense of needing to let go of who you were um, in relation to maybe a role in your life, um, you know, mother or a father or a sister or a brother or a partner. And now you're defining yourself by just what you want to do. There's an independence coming with finances and with self-worth, which is a theme that I saw earlier when I was looking at um, the overarching sort of 10 card pull for the, the year. So don't be afraid to be yourself. Don't be afraid to step into a place of power. And I do think for many of you, you're going to be focusing less on relationships and more on money. And for those of you that decide to do that, August is a good month. We have the King of Pentacles in reverse. And with Pentacles, um, this is showing growth and expansion in the area of money and resources with the reversal of a King card. This is showing a lot of things coming in towards you. Um, there's only one general note that I would say, which is don't focus so much on um, sort of treating yourself this month. You want to have uh, a sort of limits when it comes to how much you're eating, how much you're drinking, how much you're spending. So if you're in a place where you're doing well, just be a little bit more conservative during this month. Um, but I do see the focus shifting from that move that you might have taken in your life from relationships now to going into your professional or your work or your school uh, part of your life. And I think that that's okay because there's been a lot of other energy this year and this is the first time pentacles has come up. So towards the very center of the year, after you work through the emotional challenges, then money takes more of a forefront. Then things really start to go in your favor. September is probably the best month of the year for many of you. Uh, finally, you're feeling grounded. And this is a beautiful sort of illustration of what it feels like to be connected and grounded. Um, sort of green woman here um, with her feet. Like sometimes when I do a meditation, I imagine my feet are like roots. And you can see that here. This is a great time to kind of even work with that meditation. And that's something that we might use at the end of this for the benediction or the meditation. Um, but I love three of stones or three of pentacles because if we were to take from the very, very beginning, the three of cups, which is really depending on other people and wanting to be a part of the group. The three of pentacles is now having people come to you. If you look at the traditional illustration, you'll see someone like putting the finishing touches on some sort of piece of architecture or something or fine art. And then there's a couple people on the side looking up and admiring it. So the work that you've done on yourself, the work that you've put into developing and um, being a better person. And some of this is sort of a lone wolf. We saw that with the Hermit card when I was looking at the, um, the ten, 10 card spread, the Celtic cross for the year. Uh, this is going to pay off. And I think this is when you can come out of your shell a little bit if you haven't already. So September should be a more social month. We have the nine of, of wands here showing that all of that hard work that you've done is going to bring you closer to a goal. To me, this is near completion. And uh, it's, it's one step beyond the Eight of uh, Wands, which is showing busyness and abundance. This is showing for many of you almost feeling overwhelmed and sometimes feeling impatient, sometimes feeling like, I just want to finish it. I want you to just take your time, be strong, be steady, and know that you're on the right path. You have to just sort of uh, pace yourself. So that's the one message coming through as we're looking at um, October. 
November and December are the two trickiest months of the year. Um, November, we have a card here that would normally be associated with the devil. Here it's called the guardian. And for some of you, you might be feeling trapped or stuck on a path because this particular guardian isn't so much about chains, it's about the blocks that we're putting internally in our own mind and the inability to move past that. Um, it's also a card of death and uh, rebirth, uh, especially looking at the bones in this card here. And what I was seeing when I was looking at resources over the year, whether it was money or it was finance, or whether it was money or it was time rather, is that this is the, the period where I see a big shift and it's kind of echoed with this devil card. I feel like something comes and goes by the end of the year and that you're ready to hit the reset. And what we have at the very last month of the year is, um, is the moon card here. And with this one, I actually love that we see a sort of bull here in the distance, or it looks like a bull here, um, and a, a lot of birds here taking flight. So I feel like you could actually be a little bit more optimistic about where you're headed in 2020 is looking to shape up very brightly. You have to pass through any of the fears, any of the uncertainties, any of the blocks that you have. Once you let go of it and just dig in, just sort of like start moving forward, then you're going to be okay. So. To summarize um, the year overall, at the beginning of the year in January this month, we see a reminder to do what's right, to be fair, to really do everything by the letter of the law and to follow through on your obligations. As we look at February, there's a reminder to not get too involved in other people's thoughts or business. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Focus on yourself, stay clear, stay open, and again, bring in the energy that you started with January, and that's going to set the tone so that other people respect you and really don't kind of get you involved in their, um, their unnecessary sort of drama. Things are looking up in March because it feels like this is a great time for you to focus on leaning on people around you. If you, have a lot of, you have a lot of resources, a lot of support. It's a good time to, to deal with anything that's challenging because you have more likeliness of success or a likelihood of success. So don't be afraid at this point of the year if you need to do something with respect to like a legal agreement or whatever, this is a good time for contracts. Uh, as we look at April, Page of Wands, uh, I, I sensed it before I saw it here that you would you'd be starting to get ready to make a change in your life. The idea forms, but it doesn't really take form until May. And uh, in May, I want you to just really try to embrace this feeling of renewal and new opportunities. There is an emotional sort of situation that pops up for some of you, a challenge in your relationships, um, perhaps with a loved one or a family member. For the rest of you, it could just be trying to deal with the ups and downs emotionally that are going to be uh, intrinsic and sort of expected to a, a move or a shift in your life because you have one here that's starting off in the uh, right at the beginning here of May. And so June, July and August are about eventually stepping into that. By the time you are in August, um, there's an increased focus on finances and money, a sort of warning to not go too deep or to spend too much uh, in any particular area. It's all about, um, again, trying to get back to that sense of being balanced. The latter part of the year offers both some highs and lows. September, by far, one of the best months here. We have the Three of Pentacles, a good time for finishing a task, for graduation, um, for publishing, for getting something noticed, uh, and also just feeling like, finally, I can receive. That does give way a little bit as we look at October to an impatience of wanting things to happen faster. Just stay steady and don't give up because the last two months of the year are testing your resolve. We have a devil card and a moon card, which are going to bring up fears and frustrations. But as I mentioned, there's a bull here in the moon here on, on the sort of silhouette, which is showing me a bolder 2020, a more bullish 2022. And when we look at money, that's showing me that eventually things should improve. So we have to have some adjustments, some changes, some shifts in your life this year. But after you do that, you feel a sense of strength of I can handle what's coming my way and I can take flight in the following year. So overall, pretty good. Um, only The only month here to really focus on, I think, here is November um, and to try not to give into some any sort of temptations or doubt or self um, sort of self-fulfilling prophecies where you think that you can't, therefore you can't. So um, stay high mentally and uh, energetically. And I think it's going to suit you uh, and help you out throughout the year. So I hope that you enjoyed this month by month spread as well as looking at the overall energy of the year and at past, present and future influences. Again, I tried to look at it from every angle and I hope that you can uh, get what you need out of this. If you ever want to do a one on one with me and 
um, do a, a year at a glance just for you, I do offer those on my website so you can take a look at those. So as part of my gift to you here, I would love to end with a benediction. Uh, please close your eyes when you're ready. Uh, take your shoulders, move them up and back towards your ears, and then just relax your posture. Let's take a nice deep breath together. Inhale. And as you exhale, I want you to imagine that image that we saw on the uh, Three of Stones. I'll hold it up for those of you that are a little more visual. But I want you to imagine that you are being supported by Mother Earth, that you feel that everything that you've been working towards over the past several uh, years of your life, and maybe even for some of you the, the past several decades, it's finally starting to come into fruition. Feel the sense of support. Feel that you are deeply rooted in what your purpose is on the planet, that you're nurtured by your dreams, you're also supported by those around you and by the planet itself. Whatever you have, whatever you're trying to create, I want you to see it around you, or maybe you're holding on to it if it's something that's physical. And as we take the next breath, I want you to see a single ray of light shining down from the firmament above um, and see it coming through almost like if you've ever visited a foggy or cloudy region and you see that sort of ray of light that feels like it's coming literally from heaven. I want you to feel like that's what's happening. That strong light is coming now, shining on you and shining on the dream in front of you. Take a deep breath and start to feel that whatever it is you're trying to create in 2019 is starting to take shape. It's coming through the mist and you can see first the silhouette and bit by bit it's starting to materialize. Take a deep breath and see everything clearing around you. Inhale. As you exhale, allow that breath to further clear it and now you're completely surrounded by light, by clarity, there is no fog. The skies are clear around you and you see what it is you're trying to create or achieve as already there. The point at which you are now and where you are going to be, it's just a matter of timing. The quicker you can believe in yourself and start to embrace this new you, this new um, resolution, this new achievement, the easier it's going to be to catch up to it. So it's not about if it will happen, it's when it will happen and allow that to be your grounding or um, anchor for the year ahead is that you're just catching up to the inevitable, the inevitable success, the inevitable growth and strength that you've been working on um, to, to cultivate. And let's end this meditation with a sort of feeling of increasing self-worth because that's something that I saw that, uh, is, that could be a tripping point for people this year. So again, keeping your eyes closed, I want you to feel inside this sense of I am worthy. You don't have to qualify what it is. Worthy of love, worthy of money, worthy of anything. You're just worthy. You are someone who anyone would be lucky to be around. And I really want you to feel that in your bones. And if you can't believe that, then I want you to start to think I'm getting there. But let, for the sake of today's meditation, just think I am worthy and take a nice deep breath with me. Say it aloud if you want to as well. Inhale. Feel that self-worth going through every fiber of your being. Exhale. See yourself like the Three of Pentacles illustration as someone who people look up to, whose time, whose energy, whose voice, whose presence on the planet is something that brings a sense of worth, of joy, of value to everyone here. Gently open your eyes. Bring your hands to your heart center and thank yourself for looking at the year ahead, for working on yourself, for continuing to cultivate the light within. I certainly thank you for allowing me to be a part of that journey. Now, as I said earlier, I'm here if you need me. Uh, every month I do free uh, videos here on YouTube, developmental videos to help you get further, forecasting videos like this, and, uh, and I try to sort of do some live feeds uh, as, as well to sort of answer questions. So I plan on doing more of those special types of videos over this year. And, uh, and I'll see how that works. I'm gonna to continue to evolve all the different formats, so more to come there. If you ever wanna to talk to me though one-on-one, -on -one, as I said, I have a special in January. It probably won't be here all year, but in January, there'll be the year at a glance. It makes most sense to have it then, so feel free to take advantage of that if you watch this video in January. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna to start to do sort of 
seasonal specials on my site. For those of you that can book a month ahead, it will offer a little bit of savings and will um, be focused. Next month, it'll be on relationships. I may do sort of like uh, money and career in uh, March, et cetera, et cetera. I'll kind of continue to do some sort of a seasonal special on my site this year. And um, if you ever want to just support the channel and say thank you, you can join me on Patreon or give a one-time donation on my website. That goes a long way, especially for these longer videos. It gives me the time and energy to put into it and um, allow for me to sort of be here for you. Um, finally, join me on social media. A lot of times people ask when the videos are going to be posted. It does vary month to month depending on schedules. Like you, I work and I see a lot of clients. So um, if you join the channel here, make sure that you uh, click that bell icon so you get notifications and join me on my newsletter, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. And uh, that's the best way to keep in touch. So with that being said, I just want to say again, thank you so much. Happy New Year. Uh, and if you're watching this at some other point in the year, just thank you for being present. And I hope that you got what you needed out of this. Wishing you love, light, and abundance now and always. Thank you.